Limits at infinity Horizontal asymptotes This is what we're gonna see In this video That was pretty self-explanatory, so we're going to see limits at infinity and horizontal asymptotes. Let me now introduce limits at infinity. This is a new type of limits that we haven't studied yet. It is different from the infinite limits that we saw previously. What we're now interested in is the behavior of a function as x becomes very, very large, either on the positive or negative side. Okay, so let f of x be a function defined on some open interval between a finite number a and infinity. Then we say that the limit, as x goes to infinity, of f of x is equal to a finite number l if the values of the function can be made arbitrarily close to l by taking x to be very, very, very large. And we can also define the same thing on the negative side. So if we have a function defined on some open interval on the negative side, then we say that the limit, as x goes to minus infinity of f of x, is equal to l if the values of the function can be made arbitrarily close to l by taking x to be very, very large again, but now negative. So in other words, what we're interested in here is whether the, the function converges to a finite number as x becomes very large, either on the positive or negative side. Okay, so let me work through a simple example to make these definitions clear. So consider the function 1 over x. So what does the graph of this function look like? On the positive side, what you'll get is something like this. And then on the negative side, you get a branch like this. Now, just looking at the graph, we see that if x becomes very large, the function goes towards 0, while if x becomes very large but negative, it also goes towards 0. So what this means is that the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x is equal to 0, and similarly, the limit as x goes to minus infinity of 1 over x is also 0. And that makes sense, right? If x becomes very, very large, 1 over x will become extremely small, so it goes towards 0, and similarly for negative x. And in fact, it's easy to convince yourself that the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to any power, positive power r, is equal to 0. So this is for arbitrary rational number r greater than 0. So this is obvious because if x becomes very large, 1 over x will become very small, so it goes to 0. And you get the same result for negative infinity. Oops. But here you have to be careful, so x to the r must be well defined. So remember, for example, if r was 1 half, that would be a square root of x. So if x is negative, that would not be real. So you have to make sure here that everything is well defined. And just as for infinite limits, there was a related concept of vertical asymptotes. For limits at infinity, there's the related concept of horizontal asymptotes. So what are those? So we say that a horizontal line y equals to L is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of a function, so of y equals to f of x, if either the infinite limit on the positive side of the function is equal to L, or the infinite limit on the negative side of the function is equal to L. So in other words, horizontal asymptotes are horizontal line that tell you how the function behaves as x becomes very, very large on the positive or negative side. So looking back at the function 1 over x, we see here that on both the positive and the negative side, y equals to 0 is a horizontal asymptote. And we would denote those on the graph with a horizontal dash line. So to find vertical asymptotes, you have to find the points where the function blows up. To find horizontal asymptotes, you have to evaluate limits at infinity. Okay, this is all good, but how do we evaluate, how do we evaluate limits at infinity for complicated functions? Well, it turns out that using these two simple limits here, and the limit laws that we saw previously, we can evaluate the limits for many uh, more complicated functions. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so let me start with the following example. I want to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of the function x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So first I could sketch the graph of the function. For example, you could use Wolfram alpha, and you'll see that the function looks like something like this. 
So what you see is that as x becomes very large, positive or negative, the function approaches a certain value, which turns out to be y equals 1, which is a horizontal asymptote for that function and also gives you uh, the limit as x goes to plus or minus infinity. But now we want to evaluate the limit without first uh, sketching the graph of the function. How can we do that? So what this means here is that I take x to be very, very large. But if I just substitute a large number for x here, I'll get something very large over something very large, which doesn't really tell me anything, because that could be very large, that could be small, that could be zero, could be infinite. So I have no idea. So how can I evaluate this limit? Well, the idea is to do a little trick. So I'm going to rewrite the rational function by dividing both upstairs and downstairs by x squared. What I'll get is 1 minus 1 over x squared over 1 plus 1 over x squared. And now it makes a lot more sense. So if now I substitute here x for, uh, for x, a very, very large number, well, 1 over x squared becomes very small, so 1 minus a very, very, very small number is just 1. And similarly, in the denominator, 1 plus a very, very small number is just 1. So the limit as x goes to infinity becomes 1 over 1, which is just 1. So that's indeed the answer we got from the graph. Now, it is a good exercise here to fill in the steps. Uh, what I mean here is that what I've just done really is just an application, a repeated application of the limit laws and the result that we had in the previous slide, namely that the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the r for positive rational numbers r is always 0. Okay, that was cool. But can we use similar trick to evaluate infinite limits for arbitrary rational functions? Well, the answer is yes. The tip is the following. So what you want to do is divide both the numerator and the denominator of your rational function by the largest power of x that occurs in the denominator. If you, that occurs in the denominator. If you do that, then you will be able to evaluate the limit just as we did above. So that's exactly what we did here. Right? The largest power of x that occurred in the denominator was x squared, so we divided both upstairs and downstairs by x squared. Okay, so let me go through a few more examples. Consider the limit as x goes to infinity of the function 1 minus x squared over x cubed plus x minus 1. What is this? All right, well, I'm just going to use this trick to evaluate this limit. So the largest power of x that occurs in the denominator is x cubed. So I'm going to divide both upstairs and downstairs by x cubed. What will I get? I get 1 over x cubed minus x squared over x cubed. That's just 1 over x divided by 1 plus 1 over x squared minus 1 over x cubed. And then I want to evaluate this by taking x to be arbitrarily large. So let's start with the denominator. I'll get 1 plus something very, very small minus something very, very small. So that's just 1. As for the numerator, I'll get something very small minus something very small. So that's actually 0. So here when I evaluate the limit, I'll get 0 over 1, which is just 0. So indeed, infinite limits can be 0. Here's a second example. Consider the limit as x goes to minus infinity of the function x to the fourth power minus 3x squared plus x divided by x cubed minus x plus 2. How do I evaluate that? Well, I'll use the trick. Largest power of x in the denominator is x cubed, so I'm going to divide both upstairs and downstairs by x cubed, so I get x minus 3 over x plus 1 over x squared, whole thing divided by 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 2 over x cubed. And now I want to evaluate this expression for x being uh, very, very large, but negative. So if I look at the denominator first, the second and third term in the denominator are very, very small, so the denominator will just go to 1. However, in the numerator, there's something interesting going on. So the second and third term, again, become very small, but the first term is just x. So as x becomes very, very large and negative, that term will also become very, very large and negative. So in other words, as x goes to minus infinity, the numerator will go to minus infinity divided by the denominator that goes to 1. So in other words, the limit here is equal to minus infinity. So it does happen sometimes that limits at infinity are also infinite. What this means, for example, in this case, is that as x becomes arbitrarily large and negative, negative sorry, the function becomes arbitrarily large as well and negative. 
My last example is the following. The limit as x goes to infinity of the function sine of x. How do I evaluate that? Now, of course, I cannot use my little trick. This is not a rational function. So I need to just think about the function more carefully. Well, if I sketch the graph of the sine function, I know what I'm going to get. I'll get something like this, right? Now, what am I interested in? So what I'm interested in here is the behavior of the function as x becomes very, very large and positive. So what is the limit here? Is the function sine of x converging to a certain finite value? Well, it's not obvious, right? Because it keeps oscillating between minus 1 and 1. So is the limit equals to minus 1, 1, or 0? In fact, the limit does not exist here because the, the function does not converge to a finite value. It keeps oscillating, right? So what we would write here is that the limit here as x goes to infinity of sine of x does not exist because it's not well defined. All right, so what you see here is that uh, for limits at infinity, just for other limits, you have you can get three different cases. You can get a finite value, which could be zero. You can get infinite limits, so it could be plus or minus infinity, or the limits could not exist.